BSCDA are here at the Motorsport with Attitude Show and I'm having a chat with Matt Newsom about his 2019 season and his plans for 2020. Matt, thank you for doing this. Yeah, so, no, no problem at all. Um, what are you doing here today? Where's your uh, car here? Uh, no, I'm actually here racing my remote control car, which okay. you won't believe how many people actually stand there and go, that's Matt Newsom racing on there, <laughs> as, as if I don't do anything else but stock cars. But no, to be fair, I'm over there with them and I've had a quite a decent little day, to be fair, it's all right. So why is that something you do to kind of take your mind off stock cars? No, it? no, it's really funny. My friends have always done it who mechanic for me and, okay. and I used to really like mock them. We say they're so sad. Yeah. And then one day they said, oh, we needed someone else. So I said, well, all right, I'll do it. Yeah. And I had a go and actually thought, oh, this is actually really good fun. And to be honest with you, it gives me something to do with my daughter. She, yeah. she loves it, enjoys it. We, I race majority of the time Friday night. So no, normally uh, it doesn't affect my stock car. Okay. You know, I, I just do it for a bit of fun really. And that's obviously why I'm here. So are you better in those? Ones, I'm <laughs> no, I'm definitely better at remote control. I, I, I've been doing it about uh, probably about 18 months, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm already like world champion in the little league I do. Oh, so to be honest with you, yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to do that for how many years? So no, they're a lot easier and a lot cheaper as well. But no, it, it's good fun. Good, brilliant. So 2019, how, how was that? I, if I was going to choose your best bits, or you know, what would I choose? Um, probably the highlight of. Um, you know, probably 19 for me was my first King's Lynn meeting back obviously after illness. Yeah. I won the heat yeah. and it was uh, in, in front of what I really class as my, my home fans. Yeah. Um, you know, I had only just come back as well. It, it meant a lot. The lap of honour to me was like winning the world final. Yeah. So to be honest, that was probably my highlight. And to be fair, finishing the last meeting of the season at Bellevue, I won heat and final and that was the Maestro trophy. So they're, they're probably my highlights, you know, of yeah. the year to be fair. I think, you know, I've mentioned you, uh, your, your illness and I think most people were aware that you, you were you know quite severely ill at the yeah. beginning part of the year and yeah. um, kind of a big deal for you to come back into into racing I think all in all I should really class 2019 as a good year because I'm still here and I yeah. think a lot of people didn't think I'd race all year yeah. um, and to be fair obviously when it happened in February which is sort of coming up for a year I didn't think I'd be back yeah. then but obviously things went well I got out of hospital I wanted to get back out there my mum and dad stopped me for about another three or four weeks when I wanted to go out yeah. there, and then I did and to be honest with you I, I had a good a year as I've, I've sort of had so you know maybe it done me good it, it was it was very different for me racing this year just for some fun I, I'd missed a lot of the season yeah. I didn't also think I'd do a lot of good after sort of coming back so I just raced just for just literally just to have a laugh yeah. and with that attitude it actually done me the world of good because I weren't chasing points yes. I, I was just racing to try and win and, and to be fair I had quite a good little run yeah. you, had, you had a really good you know I do remember you having a really strong start yeah. when, when you came back around, yeah I know. did yeah I think I wanted to you know I wanted to prove a point that I could still do it after realness. and also sort of say thanks a lot of people won't understand the support I got through the stock car community from yeah. being ill and you know I felt as you know I, I felt obviously overwhelmed really with yeah. what they'd done for me I just wanted to do as good as I can say you know thanks to them in, in my own little way yeah when I when I talk to you know drivers throughout these interviews and I say kind of what's the best bit about Formula Ones and people say it's the, the family yeah, it is. aspect yeah. of it and yeah. how everybody rallies together yeah, no, that's it obviously you I know we all say oh yeah it's good but it's not until something like that happens that you really see everybody pulled together and yeah. you know and the support I had really does show that that there's no better family like it really yeah. than that okay and um in 2019 you were involved in one of the the big stock car <coughs> moments of the season at yeah. uh, the british yeah. Hednesford. yeah um going to the last bend you looked like you were on course for the for the victory <laughs> but um somebody else had other ideas yeah no to be fair i don't hold it against lee at the end of the day we all race because we want to win yeah. coming second is completely pointless and Lee did what he had to do. The only difference was when Stuart did it the season before at yeah. Bellevue, he actually pulled it off and, and got the win. And yeah. I felt for Lee a little bit because when you pull a move like that off, when it all goes wrong and you both crash out, yeah. it seems a, a pointless exercise. Yeah. But, um, you know, he done what he had to do. I Still to this day, I believe that if Carl Hawkins hadn't have been in front of me at the time, I think I'd have rode it and I think yeah. I'd have been all right. But it, this is stock car racing. Yeah. And, no, and that's, uh, I wouldn't say that's the downside of the year because it's not because I I, you know, I won the heat. I was in contention, but I mean, two years in a trot, yes. losing <laughs> on the last corner. It, yeah. it, to be fair, it was a it was a rough journey home. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yeah. So you said that um, you can talk about it now and say about um, you know Lee had to do what he had to do. But you know, at the time when it happened, is that what you really no, thought? No, no, like? no, no. I don't, I'll be honest with you. When it actually happened, I wasn't even angry at Lee. Yeah. I was just so gutted at what had happened again. Yeah. I remember sitting on the start line at Hennesford waiting for the trophies and that, and I was just like, this, this is a joke. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like that. And then, then. You sort of that side of it goes and you start to think about I've oh, had hell Lee, it was a bit pointless, you didn't even get me, do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But you know, at the end of the day, 
now look back, if he hadn't have done, uh, well, that don't make him a stock car race at all. Do you know that riding around? For, I, mean, I remember seeing Dan Johnson do like a kamikaze last bender on Nigel Green at the yeah. Well, he was never going to make it, yeah. but you've got to have a go. There is a, ever such a small chance yeah. that it might just come off. Yeah, and yeah. if you don't do that, you're, you're not a, a hard yeah. and fast, you know, stock car driver. Well, I think for you guys, you know, you're at the top of the sport. Do you yeah, know what I mean? And, and you know, and you, you race yeah. on the edge, aren't you? And yeah. you've, you've got to do this kind of stuff. Everyone said to me, "Oh, I think you're far enough." I'll tell you now, when I drove down that back straight, I knew it was coming. Do yeah. they, I don't care how far in front you are, they're going to have a go and, and that and that's exactly what happens. So. Okay. And, and if roles were reversed, you'd do the Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The, only, the only difference is I would have got over the line first. No, <laughs> no, no, but that, no, in lead event, I would have done exactly the same and yeah. I would honestly, if it had been Tom, Frank, Nigel, right, it doesn't matter who it is at the top of the sport, yeah. they're, they're going to have a go. Yeah, so. of course they are. Okay, so um, a good 2019. Winter, what have you been doing over the winter season? Have been busy? Yeah, um, obviously I've just been flat out building stock cars okay. for other people. I, I'll be honest with you, mine are still loaded up from the year before. Really? I have done nothing to it. I, I have got a new shale car. Oh, I've had it for quite a while, but I've never got around to finishing it. And I was yeah. determined this winter I was going to finish it, but I haven't touched it again. Okay. Um, so to be honest with you, I, I'm, you know, luckily my last car is still good. It's good to go. It won last day at Bellevue. Yeah. So first King Glynn, oh, I'll just get ready and go. But I've been building a new car for Chris Cowley. Yeah. Um, I've been doing another new car for John Thompson. Yeah. Um, James Morris rents off me every shower yeah. meeting. I've done him a new car, so the car that he currently uses can go down to the next people that hire. Yeah. So that sort of, that's just kept me, you know, yeah. sort of flat out, but I, I haven't actually done anything for myself again, so. Just that's really positive though, that so many people are, you know, wanting new cars and wanting yeah, to no, kind definitely. of like, you know, come into sport or better yeah. themselves. That's a real I mean, positive for the sport, surely. The, the internet has got, uh, it's got fours and against. So when I read on the internet how, how down Formula One is, and it, you know, it, it's not true. People are still buying, people yeah. are still going, cars keep turning up. But on the other side of that, internet's great. You know, it gets a lot of publicity out there and people know that if the meeting's been canceled, booked in, yeah. it, all that side of it's great. But sometimes the things you read in there, people are always down about it. Yeah. Nobody's ever like, I'll tell you what, can't wait to start again, get going. It's gonna be, it, they always wanna find a negative, which yeah. sort of frustrates me a little bit. But at the same time, there, it, it is going. Going all right, you know, people are still buying. People, I mean, I think how much my phone rings about people renting cars. Okay. That means that there's that many people that want to have a go. Yeah, yeah. It only takes a handful of them to then buy or race regularly, and you know, it, it's going all right. Do you think that you know, obviously, you hire cars out? That I guess that helps fund some of your racing. Yeah. You know, do you think that's integral for Formula One to get people into the sport to kind of I, I assume, have a go? I, I know, I know, old man Frank used to do it a lot of years ago. When I first started doing it, it wasn't really something that happened. Frank used to do it occasionally, but I only did it really because I, I the way that the way life went I acquired a few cars and then people did start asking me I thought I'll tell you what yeah. and then obviously I didn't realize that but like five years ago now it's just taken off now yeah. I near enough feel like I do it full time um, but yeah, you don't believe how much the phone rings you know like, can I do Scotland can I do Bristol can I do that and, you know <laughs> to be fair it, it, it's it's mad busy already and yeah. we haven't even fixed this came out like a week yeah. ago so I, I'm not saying that's a you know I've not like that I put a good so it, it's just the fact that people want to have a go yeah. and you also I wouldn't believe the amount of people that ring me don't actually want to race but just want to drive one. Okay, I mean, yeah. I go to Swaffham quite a lot with a lot of people and they just want to have a go one. Yeah. That, that Formula One buzz, yeah. you know, I don't want to race one, but I just want to get and turn a few laps and, yeah. you know, that, that's great, you know. Yeah. Um, how many cars you got then? Because uh, well, yeah. I get asked this all the time, yeah. and I'm never really hundred sure. I think I've got twelve that actually I could could put all out together. Okay. I've got more than that in bits, yeah. bits that I'm building. But I think I've got twelve. If I now wanted to, I could put twelve. Yeah, obviously, okay. some of them are mine. Some of the ones I have on permanent hire to yeah. different people. I mean, Kelvin Hassel, he has his own. Yeah. Um, James Morris has his own. I try and keep them just to them because they drive them all the time. They set them up. The, the worst thing they want is somebody else getting somebody yeah. else. They've one drives different yeah, and then I've got probably three or four that people that just want to do one-offs they keep rotating yeah. like that so you need like a checklist on you oh, and like walk so around and tick them all off make sure they're there you want to believe people say oh your team must hate you <laughs> and to be fair my team are really good they do work hard they yeah. know that as well you know but they, they love it as well yeah. you know well, it is. It's a huge. It's a huge effort. I mean, I, Skegness. I think you know you've got you, so many cars in one part of the pit. Yeah, so it like... It's like, <laughs> like Matt Newson corner. Yeah. Isn't it? No, it, it is hard work, and it definitely affects my racing on a on a negative yeah. because I, I don't get time to do my own. You know, but on the positive, I also couldn't really afford to race at the, the league I do race at. So it, I have to do one for yeah. the other. So it, uh, it, my racing is certainly better now since the higher cars. Yes. But I'm also twice as busy. So that's a downside. Yeah. So okay. 
Okay, so 2020, uh, not far away. So no. what are your you know, plans? Have you got any goals, aspirations? Oh, I just want to be a champion. I know, <laughs> I know everyone says the same, but obviously with, with what's happened with the last few worlds, British, it's all yeah. that, I'm always there. I mean, even like silver, the last day, I only, only needed like an eighth in the national this year to win. It's yeah. always so close, but I'm sick of being so close. Yes. It's time, uh, it, you know, I, I laughed at Tom when he won the British now. I was like, that. I should be on that top yeah. step because it, you know, it was my time, but that's what I need to do. Yeah. I, I kind of want to, I'm not really bothered. I could have the worst year going, but if I won one of them, yeah. it'd make it all right. Because quite often when you read on the internet, you know, you mentioned the internet, um, you know, unlucky striver, you can yeah, see yeah. sitting it's that all the time. Yeah, yeah. you're always, always mad. Yeah. I watch there. Premier Sports and I don't know how many times Dave Goddard comments that unluckiest yeah. man. <laughs> you know, I'm sick of hearing it. It's, it's time I was there at yeah. the top. But I mean, there's a lot of good competition. It's not yeah. easy. People, you know, people are good and they're not going to give it to you. So I've got to earn it. But I feel like it is my time to, yeah. you know, to go out there and win something. Do you feel you've got to take a particular driver on to do that? I just, no, do you no, no, it doesn't matter because if you took Tom on Frank will beat you if you took Frank on Nigel will beat you yeah. if you took Dan on th 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 you can't do it you've got to be better than them on the day yeah. and you know I look at the shootout this year I didn't deserve to win the shootout I think I don't think I finished the first four finals right, okay. and I sat there and went well that's, that's this year done yeah, yeah. and then a couple of drivers get in a battle you, s you start to catch points up and yeah. come on the last day Tom and Frank were having their own little battle everyone forgot about me because yeah. I was so far behind next thing you know with double points I've nearly won yeah. so that and I think that's really what what happened and you know you can't just single out obviously everyone will say you need to beat Tom Tom's yeah. been the star of the year yeah, obviously yeah. everyone will say you need to beat him and to be fair if you beat Tom you'd probably beat the rest yeah. but you can't just pick on one because whilst you're beating that person yes. you forgot about to leave fair yeah. you know you leave out loads of people because when, when you start you start listening there you go actually you, you have yeah, got you to do. the top of the yeah. sport you've got a huge nucleus yeah. of very very uh, good well, me, me and Peter Folding quite regularly chat about obviously old time races to new times and Peter says to be honest with you back in the day you didn't have that many people most of them used to beat themselves yeah. really you only had a, a select few that you had to beat nowadays yeah. you've got 20 drivers every week that yeah. they could win today and, and, and it, the competition now is definitely better than it's probably ever been do you find that hard work you knowing that every meeting it's you've got to be on yeah, your you, a game if you I, want to be a top of the sport i, I sit at the back of that grid some skegness meetings and i look in front of me and you know <laughs> I, I see all them drivers and think, hell man you've got half a lap on me yeah. and you've got as good a stuff as me and you yeah. can drive well and it is tough and yeah. again me and frank always joke do a Birmingham meeting, you get 10th in the final, you've had a good race, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not none of this winning no more. No, you do notice that at Birmingham, like you say, especially yeah, that like, you, know, you look down the grid yeah. and there's, there's you guys still down yeah. there and you're kind of going, what are they yeah, doing? It's just mad, it's just yeah. how, it's just how it's, which is definitely good for the low graders yeah. and without low graders you don't have top graders, so you, you, it's good for them, but it is really hard. Some tracks doesn't seem to work like that. You go to places like King's Lynn and it is normally always probably the top five or six that win, but you go to Sheffield, Birmingham, places like yeah. that and it is, you know, a low grader got away, had a crack and drive, yeah. and next thing you know, you're miles yes. behind. You've raced really hard for like eight places, and, and it <laughs> just like, doesn't seem <laughs> worth it, you know. But I think you need that as well for the sport. Yeah, you, you need do. That, they're, they're, them low graders have to have a good day. If yeah. not, they get you know cheesed off yeah. with it and, and, and stop. So they've got to have their. And I speak to a lot of them. One good meeting for them will do them months. They yeah. can have months of bad meetings, but that one good beat, that'll, that'll yeah. remember that for, for a long time. Let's talk to Kelvin, and he was saying, I, you know, I had great six laps on Shale at yeah. one meeting, and that was his highlight. That, that, yeah, yeah, and they, and the, the next free Shale meetings, when it only does a few laps, he'll still remember that, yes. that six, because that is what it's all about, you know. I remember seeing Kelvin's face when he, when he got a win at Birmingham, and then nearly won the final at Ipswich, and like I say, months then, nobody forgets that it didn't do two or three, that, it, that, that was still the yeah. highlight of it. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're going for a championship. We're going to have one in 2020. We that, are, that yeah. You are definitely. Um, you live a long way from the track, so you know I you're going to yeah. you, you do most of the meetings. Is that still yeah. the plan for 2020? Yeah, I, I do. Me and my dad always say, "Oh, we're not going to do so much this year because I don't need to." With you know that, but the trouble is, in the pe the meetings that I would probably say. I'm not going to bother going to. Loads of people want to rent, yeah. so I think, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to take their car, I might as well take my yes, own. So I end up like, uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be going all the way to Bristol this year yeah. because it's a long way for me. But I already know four or five people have said, "Can I do Bristol? Yeah, it's yeah. near me. Yeah. Oh, I might as well go." <laughs> and then, and I end up going. I, I, yeah. I probably wouldn't do a lot of the Buxtons because of the the length. It's Sunday. It's always yeah. late. And but 
that's what everybody wants to do. And yeah. I mean, Bellevue is a nightmare for me. How long is Bellevue? Bellevue's five hours, but it's the it's the four o'clock start yeah. time. It's normally ten time we finish. My yeah. poor dad has to drive home. I mean, Monday is just a write off. Yeah, yeah. But I can't miss a Bellevue because I promised James Morris that he could do every Bellevue, yeah. and normally Kelvin does a Bellevue, and, and so do other people. That next thing you know, well, I'm off to Bellevue <laughs> yeah. again, and that's just how it works. Yeah. So yeah, you must have lots of conversations on the transporter. You must do. Something. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to be honest with you, I normally sleep all the way there and all the way home, <laughs> and I wake up. And, Are we home, Dad? You know that day is, but Brilliant. no, it is hard on him. Matt, it's been brilliant talking to you. I hope you get a championship in 2020. Yeah, me too. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye.